uh, when I've seen, I've watched things with you on YouTube where people will attack you for, uh, they'll attack you for yeah. being Islamophobic or that you are attacking Islam more, but clearly that's not the case. Yeah, I mean, I mean, th the fact of the matter is like, you cannot, you cannot criticize Islam in most Muslim countries. So even here in the West, they created some sort of like catch 22. So if somebody is a, is a white person like Sam Harris or uh -oh. they immediately get attack him as cisgender white male, which is kind of interesting to hear to from like Muslims who don't believe in, in trans, trans rights. And, uh, <laughs> right. So they, but if you, if somebody like me, who is from the Middle East, they immediately gonna attack him as some sort of Uncle Tom, mass murderer. So they created Catch-22 is that in, in the middle, in the Muslim world, you cannot criticize Islam. And if you do it in the West, you will be you will be labeled immediately as uh, as some sort as of a traitor. Uh, as a traitor, right? So this this is an incredible thing to me. So I've had Majid Nawaz on, obviously. And, yeah, and, uh, I think you know Majid, right? I, I, I'm 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 in the acknowledgement of his latest book. There so, you go. Uh, so uh, so you know him a little bit, um, and he gets this all the time. That yeah, somehow he, he gets it more than I do. I right. Think. So he yeah. gets that he's a traitor, or he's an Uncle Tom, or he's a porch monkey. I mean, these guys. Yeah. And again, <laughs> that's and, yeah. Which and is, we've talked about this a lot, but this is coming from people on the left. So what I don't understand is if you believe in liberal values and you want women to be free and you want gay people to be free and all yeah. of those things and you want equality for everybody, how do they expect to get it if not through people like you and Majid? Forget, forget Sam. Okay, they want to throw him under the bus. Whatever. Well, I'm not going to forget Sam. I, He's a great guy. No, but, no of course. Uh, but I, I, of course, I'm not for that. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm just but what saying. I'm saying is, if they want to just remove, if they want to use their own version of bigotry to remove him because yeah. he's a white guy, fine. But then, wouldn't they look at someone like you that stands up for all those values on the left and say, "This is a guy. He survived living under yeah. Saddam. He now fights to make his country and those other countries stand up for the very values that we, as progressives, say we're for." Yeah. And yet, you don't get support out of these guys, do you? Yeah, I mean, I, I do get some, but but I, I know what you're referring to is that the regressive left, as Majid Nawaz. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very interesting. I call it the unholy alliance that happened between the liberal left and the Muslim right uh, <laughs> against the the or Muslim or secular left in the Arab world. Right. And uh, so, ironically, I, I, the secular left, just to put that all together, the secular left is actually lined up in a weird way with. The conservative with the conservative right, right. Of yes, America. which is which is very it's bonkers. Yeah, it is extremely. Uh, I mean, they do, they don't say it very publicly, but the the fact of the matter, I mean, they apply extreme different standards to. Uh, and I was speaking at UC Berkeley before I came here, and I've had also some debates in in, in Northern California, and I told him like, what do you call a conservative Republican who is against gay marriage? And he said, I call him a bigot. Then he said, um, thank you for calling 90% of Muslims bigots. Then he said, I never said that. that. Right. Okay, then I told him, if you apply different standards to different people based upon their race, and because they think that Muslim is the brown, technically. Right, if so you, it's not even a race, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you apply different people, uh, different standards based upon their race, then you are actually a racist. And this this form of, of racism is sometimes get... get um, because most of the racism we talk about is like the KKK. And the fact of the matter is that they agree. So like when, when somebody like the Charleston shooting, the one that happened in South Carolina, is that the guy said, I'm motivated by racism. And they immediately took him for his word. And they're true, they're, they're right. Like his guy was motivated by racism. Mm -hmm. But replace, guy, replace this guy by ISIS. And ISIS says, I am literally motivated by this interpretation of Islam. The same guys who said that this guy was motivated by racism will say, no, no, this thing has ulterior motives, right. and it must be about economics and, and foreign policy. Geopolitics. And George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, <laughs> and, and they lump in all the, they create the salad of everybody they hate, and they put him in uh, one category. And so, so you see, like, the double standard is extremely obvious. And uh, so as a result of that, they kind of created a smoke screen for apologists and, and, and even extremists to flourish. And, and I mean, like, people like me have to fight against the religious right and the far right in the United States who, who consider me like inferior human being. Right, and, and, and to me it's like, and have to, them. I, I, yeah, and have to fight the, the religious right in my own country, the Islamic right, and I, then I have to fight the apologist left. <laughs> so like they created extra fronts yeah. for, and they, they have made it very much very much difficult for 
people like Majid Nawaz and many people who are, I mean, reformers, uh, uh, to actually even have the discussion to begin with, because they don't think there is any discussion to be had, and it's all about U.S. foreign policy, and they always try to divert the discussion into it's all about America. It's yeah. all about America. You know, and I've like, also noticed now, now that I've followed more of these people on Twitter, and there's probably a good uh, maybe 40 people like yourself that are trying to yeah. reform and coming from these countries and trying to make things better, I see people like you tweeting about coexistence, tweeting about how do we make things better, all that. And I never see it from the regressives. I, I, yeah. They always are screaming about foreign policy or whatever it is. And yeah. I'm not defending our foreign policy. That's, that's the yeah, irony it's, it's here. It's not a binary system. It, it's not a binary system. Yeah. And yet, I, so what is the angle? What is it that they're throwing back at you that they can't get behind what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they think that the biggest problem, like, so they see the world kind of like a pyramid. So the biggest problem in this world is cisgender, white male, capitalist, rich, and then... Do we have to define cisgender? I didn't know what it was until about a month ago. Uh, I, I mean, too. I, I get to... Because <laughs> I get attacked because of it. Is, is, uh, because you're cisgender. Because I'm cisgender. Which yeah. just means that you were born at the gender that your sexuality... Yeah, and that's now a privilege. Supposed uh, to be. And privilege. I was like, I, I come from Iraq, and my brother was killed, and you're telling me I'm privileged here. But anyway, so they, they, they have this pyramid in which there is... Uh, they see the world based upon like race, gender, and, and uh, financial privilege. And they think that the biggest problem in this planet is Western capitalism. And uh, they link everything in this world into, it's a very American-centric point of view, yeah. is that they link everything problem in this world as a problem of, so, so if, if, a, if a brown person from Pakistan wants to blow himself up to, to say, to defend Jerusalem, quote unquote, uh, they will say that this is as a result of imperialism happening by the military industrial complex connected to Western capitalism. So they always lump everything to that, and everything is an expression of grievances. So like you say somebody's like, I hate Jews. And they say like, well, I mean, he doesn't literally hate Jews, but that is his language to express his frustration with American imperialism. Right. So, so they always link everything back to, so that is their, uh, it's, uh, their, their point is like, yeah. and then I can, people like Noam Chomsky, who is like the head of the, of the movement, I, yeah. I would say. Um, I would have him on, but I don't think he'd like to talk to someone smarter than him. <laughs> well, I mean, the, I mean, it's, it's. I don't think it's. I mean, Sam tried to engage with him, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's. It's. Uh, you can actually have a conversation. Is that it's? I mean, they they seem to subscribe to a specific dogma. Like I always try to like uh, make d debate with my friends, and I can like predict what Chomsky is going to write just by seeing the title of the article. So like I make five points, I say, this is what Chomsky is gonna say in the in this paragraph, in this paragraph, and I always like get my fifty dollars because I bet with them <laughs> on like what exactly Chomsky is gonna write. He's gonna say that it's about American imperialism, he's gonna say it's about the grievances, he's gonna say about capitalism. And all his like you don't need to read all his books, even though I've read like quite quite a lot, but it seems like I've read two books and all the rest were like just, we're just uh, subscribed to the same. Uh... So is that the danger of these guys? Because what they're doing, even if a certain percentage of what they're saying is right about American foreign policy. I, I had Douglas Murray on last week, yeah. who I thought really said something that I had never thought of before, which was that he said, you know, you Americans always think everything's about you. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. That's what these guys are doing. But let's just say a certain percentage is. I mean, yeah, it's half truth. I mean, I mean, many of them, I mean, look at, for example, uh, what, what some apologists say, is that when they, they say, like, the majority of Muslims don't support ISIS. This is true. But Al-Qaeda also doesn't support ISIS. So the, the question of, if, do you support ISIS or not, saying not doesn't move you to the moderates. Yeah. You can subscribe to a lot of beliefs that ISIS, you agree with ISIS with, and you don't need to support ISIS. For example, Ayatollah Khamenei and all of the Ayatollahs in Iran, they disagree with ISIS. But if you look at how they treat gays in Iran, it's not that much different than ISIS. So like the disagreement, so they tell you a, a truth, which is the majority of Muslims don't agree with ISIS, which is true. But that's half a truth. They don't tell you that there's a significant amount of Egyptians and Pakistanis and, and, and so many countries around the Muslim world that think that penalty apostasy should be death. Right. So, which is, 
So, so and I, that's why I say I think like the pure research that has been done on like Sharia and what Muslims believe, and I uh, ask everybody to read it, was very intelligent because it asks specific questions. It doesn't people they didn't ask people like, oh, do you support ISIS or not, or do you support 9/11 or not? But they ask them like a question: Do you think that suicide bombing? Is an, is an appropriate way of dealing with the grievances. Mm -hmm. And they, you see a significant amount of saying yes. Yeah. And do you think it should be allowed of killing these people who conspire with the Americans and the Israelis? Uh, yeah. they, they will say yes. And a significant amount will say yes. So, so, this, so when somebody says, so all of these things, even though some of the parts are true, I mean, as I said, like, I, U.S. foreign policy in Iraq has not been very great, <laughs> and uh, to say the least. And there are so many things that should have been done that have not been done. And uh, so, yes, United States foreign policy have played a role in, in in rise of the extremism in the Middle East. But they're not the root of the problem. There is a huge difference between... And the reason, like, what's kind of very ironic is, like, the moment he, they agree, like, for example, on the abortion clinics that ha had, like, happened in the United States, they agree that this is a result of religious fundamentalism. Right. Like, many of the liberals agree that Mike Huckabee and Teddy Cruz and all of these folks are motivated, are Christian fundamentalists, and they are worried about them because they're Christian fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. But the moment that it's, it's, this, this discussion goes into Islam, the moment that no, the root of the fundamentalist has nothing to do with the text, has nothing to do with interpretation, and it's all about us. It immediately goes in back, yeah. uh, and it's very self-centered, like egotistical point of view. Is that and everything is about solving. the United States? It's not solving anything. I mean, I think that's no, it's why, not. That's it's actually very dangerous, as you mentioned, because they are giving a free pass to these people that me and others who are fighting on a daily basis. They were, yeah. we're fighting against the theocrats in our countries, and and and. The, 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 the regressive light has given these people a free pass to telling them, well, it's nothing to do with, it's all about us. Do you think they're consciously aware of it? Because I've sort of struggled with this question a bit, and when I've talked to people, I, I think a lot of people, I think Sam at this point thinks that they're fully malicious in what they're doing, so, and I pretty much think so too. But there is, I want to give some of these guys a little of the benefit of the doubt that they're not doing this maliciously. I mean, you it sort of depends on, on who, who are we talking about. Um, I, I mean, I, I think we need to mention names here, because even though I didn't want to mention names, but the, I mean, I, I think that people like Nam Chomsky and Frankenstein and some folks, Nam Klein, I think, um, are motivated by an ideology that they actually care about, which is like left libertarianism, anarchism, uh, against like United States capitalism and things of that sort. There are people who are completely disingenuous and completely dishonest, and they would, misrepresent all of other people's views. Like, I, I was, I was... I think, I think all my viewers probably know uh, the long yeah, I, names that you're going Yeah, so, so there, there are people who, like, um, like, uh, for example, I had a debate on, which was featured on NPR, WYNC, about Islamophobia in New York City, and I said there are progressive Muslims, uh, moderate Muslims, conservative Muslims, and uh, extremists. And then I was attacked as being generalizing on Muslims. <laughs> And I said, that is exactly what I didn't do, is that the, that the statistics and, and, and the research is being done is to avoid generalization. Is when you say there's like 40% of Americans believe in creationism, you are literally saying that 60% of them don't. That yeah. is, you're not generalizing on Americans. But I kept repeating the same statement, and they kept saying that you are generalizing on all Muslims as being extremists. And I, and I kept repeating, and they kept saying the same thing. And then they, they, they go in and, and, and take something out of context, and then they put that in a meme and share it on social media. And somehow, I start getting attacked as me generalizing on Muslims, yeah. which is completely disingenuous. So, I mean, what Sam has been dealing with is, is the pretty much what many of us who are actually talking on the subject are dealing with, yeah. is that th th they are... They're purely, they're pu people are purely disingenuous on this subject. And the, they, and actually, it's kind of interesting. I think that they want to create something, what I was telling you about Bashar al-Assad, which is to destroy all the nuanced approach of the liberal critics of Islam yeah. and try to create the battle between them and people like Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer and all of the far-right morons, yeah. and so in that way they will give people a binary system in which they tell 
you know what? So the, it's a war between far-right fascists and Muslim innocent people. So which side are you going to choose? I love that. I love that framing because I, th I mean, I'm getting email literally from all over the world every day at this point. People talking about this middle ground. Yes. That's why I wanted to connect with you, and that's why I've been talking about this stuff on the show because I don't think most people are one side or yeah. the far left or the far right. Yeah. I think most people are right here. Yeah. I mean, for, for I think I mean. Sometimes, I mean, on college campuses, it seems to me that the, the debate is also, like, it's, it's very polarized. Like, I, and I was speaking at UC Berkeley and Palo Alto, and, I, and I'm speaking in Cornell, and, and I spoke in so many universities before, and I can see that in campuses, the debate seems to be much more polarized than on, it's on the media. And, the, I mean... And, and I'm guessing it's a lot of, it's a lot of white... Liberals People on the left. Yes, it is. They're upset with you. Yes, which is which is extremely. It, it, so they always want to turn it about them. It was like I I, I I kept talking about like issues related to honor killing in Iraq and and things of that sort, and then a, a guy jumps up. There has to be like a white liberal. There has to there has to be this guy. There has yeah. to be this dude yeah. who shows up at my venue, uh, whatever I go around the state. So say no, it's nothing to do with with the culture. It's nothing to do with the religion there. It's all about us. Uh, don't you know about the? He has, has to give me like the lecture about the military industrial complex. Don't you know about Wall Street? Don't pay taxes. <laughs> Do, so so none of the stuff. We, you're not defending any of them. Exactly, and, and there's no correlation. I mean, I, like I, I I always mention this example. It's like for example. If somebody, let's say a radical Muslim, he walks in the, let's say, small town in Arkansas or Mississippi, and, and some redneck goes in and calls him like a sand nigger, and like, or he faces any racism there. And then this person, the same person, goes back to his house and kills his daughter because she added the guy on Facebook. These two actions are not related <laughs> with each other. Is that right. what some people think is that this guy, because he's facing oppression or racism in some sort, that's lead, led him to kill his daughter, which something that he believed in probably before he came to the United States. And so, yeah, and they think that everything is really centered about op uh, oppression dynamics. And, and what's happening is that now you cannot even talk about the subject without claiming to be victim and claiming to be oppressed. So now, like, the whole competition is that who is the most victim? And, and yeah. And that's why, like, I don't really go, want to go to the identity politics myself because it's, like, a very crazy world. It's, like, all that, like, now I look at websites like Tumblr or things like this in which, like, somebody's identification is, like, it's not like, oh, I'm from there and I studied there or whatever. It's, like, I am transgender, gender fluid, uh, <laughs> asexual, this, 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 this. It's all about, like, his oppression, like, how much he's oppressed. And that is... What is now concerned the biography, like yeah. in some in some places. So at some level, if you could lighten your skin and change your biography away from Iraq, they'd like you a little bit more in a weird way, because they would think that you're helping the oppressed, yeah. instead of somehow being from the place that you're now betraying. Like it's so warped. Yeah, it's it, it's it's very yeah. I mean, it's it's very. I mean, that, as I said, like they they look at the wall. The wall is a pretty much like as a pyramid, and and that's what like if you if you got like the critical race theory and uh, gender theory and it's pretty much all about class gender and race and there's hardly any mention of ideology and they so that's the way they see the world so it is anything that a brown person is doing uh, even though that is his culture that existed before the United States or even Israel um, they say, well, this is as a result of an oppression. Of, he's an oppressed by the somebody who's on the upper class. But there is a, there are signs of hope. I mean, for example, yeah, give, like, me, give me some hope. We got about eight minutes left. Let's finish. Yeah, there are signs Let's of hope. Strong with hope uh, is that if if people go to movements.org and they see like the continuous help, like many of these activists are doing, they're trying to achieve things in their own countries. Because like when I start becoming an when I start like being activist myself, and and there were only very few people I see on the internet who were secular free thinkers. And now I look at Facebook and social media, and I see tons of thousands from Iraq, from Syria, from Lebanon, from all over the Arab world. Countries like Tunisia has voted for a secular country. Mm -hmm. uh, despite of all the status quo of, of the region, is that is that many people think that, that the Middle East is like one country. If it's like things are bad somewhere, it's bad everywhere else. Yeah. I, mean, there are, I mean, places like northern Iraq, which is like the Kurdish region, they seem to be much more developed in terms of human rights uh, then they have women on the ground fighting ISIS. Yeah. Then Turkey's bombing them. That's a whole. Other yeah, story, that's but. that's. Uh, that, I mean, I mean, th I mean, of, of, as you said, like yeah, there are signs of pessimism there because Turkey has a long secular history and 
it is going backward with the but at the same time there is a, I mean I would say a very strong opposition for the Erdogan in Turkey that needs to be supported and that's and that's I think like if there's any message I would give to the liberals is like just don't betray us here like there liberals in the way should stand with their fellow liberals in the east and and should not start to apply double standards and should not stand with our enemies yeah. that's that's if there's a message I can say just don't stand if you don't want to help just don't don't stand with our enemies just make it kind of more easier yeah uh, well I, I love that message and I love the fact that you brought it also back to colleges because that's where I started the show today because we you know we have all this stuff with free yeah. speech going on on our yeah, and Missouri and Yale, the, the recent cases. Exactly. Uh, so that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And to me, it's a, it's a direct extension of what these guys on the left have done because yeah. they've made everyone so intolerant, yeah. just as you're saying, that now it's sort of like they, they're now reaping what they've sowed. Yeah, it's kind of very interesting. It's like it's, 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 it's really a slippery slope. They, like, you're going to see over a moment of time, they're going to start attacking each other. So it was it was a, a female fe female white feminist criticizing male white feminists as being male privilege. Now the female is going to get attacked by a transgender disabled person of color yeah. attacking the white uh, trans transgender non-disabled. Uh, so they're going to start attacking each chart. other. Yeah. And eventually, nobody's going to be allowed to speak because anybody's going to claim offense and um, that, oh, they are trivializing the experience of of, I mean, just to end it with a funny story, I mean, with, with funny people like this, I, somebody's like messaged me and he said, she said, uh, you should stop posting pictures of you smiling on Facebook. And I said like, yeah, what's going on over here? And then she said, uh, when you post pictures of you smiling, you are intentionally trying to trivialize the experience of depressed people. I was like, LOL, are you kidding me? <laughs> and then she like blocked me immediately. So, so yes. So so and eventually the funny part is this person get attacked by other people who they also consider her trivializing their experience yeah. by like eating food with her hand because they're disabled. So, so, so it just never ends. It, it, just, it, never. it just never ends. And I think, uh, but I'm very glad that there's now a counter movement to who are the real liberals standing against the the regressives and yeah. uh, because the thing is I want everyone to be treated equally me too equally as shitty you don't have to treat everyone as equally great treat everyone equally as shitty that would be fine with me you know? yeah I want women wherever they are to be treated equal whether yeah. they're in the United States or whether they're in Saudi Arabia I want gay people to be treated equally wherever yeah I want the white cis male to be treated shitty that guy can be treated <laughs> I like that well, well let's hope not but uh, yeah I mean that is that is I mean that's what really mo motivated me when I started my activism is is literally I mean, the movement that I started is called the Global Secular Humanist Movement, in which, after seeing so many conflicts about sectarianism and, and religious extremism rising up, is that the best way is to create a secular society, a secular liberal society, in which all people, regardless of race or gender or, or sexual sexual orientation, would live equally, without saying that oh. Um, it's their culture and things of that sort because, I mean, my, my uh, motto is humans have rights, cultures and beliefs don't have rights. And uh, ideas should be up to criticism and debates, and human rights have to be sustained all across the board. Wow. All right. Well, that's that's a beautiful ending. You will always have my support. Well, thank and, you. And I think uh, I think we're on to something because when even when I was tweeting that you were coming on, people wanted to hear this. And I think you're right. Even though there's a lot of bad stuff going on, there is some hope there. And there's a lot of signs of hope, and and you, I think your show is one of them. All right. Well, I appreciate that. You guys can uh, follow Faisal. It's Faisal Al Mutar on uh, the Twitter. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll do it again next week.